This is the brief on News First Digital. A very good evening and welcome. This is the brief at seven on News First Digital, Sri Lanka's first ever online news bulletin. I'm Ramesh Rukal Bandara and I'm Sarah Lafont Seka. The police have not been able to apprehend the individuals responsible for the shooting. The chief incumbent of the Kiriwehera in Kataragama, Venerable Kobavaka Dhamindothera. According to a source close to the investigation, steps have been taken to ensure that the suspects do not flee the country. Venerable Dhamindothera, who was injured in the shooting, is currently receiving treatment at a private hospital in Colombo. The Thera, who was shot at on the 12th of this month, is in a stable condition according to doctors. As after the shooting, the police revealed that they have identified several suspects in connection to the shooting. The police names former chairman or Kapu Mahathir of the Kataragama Mahasen Devalaya, Asela Bandara, as the chief suspect. When inquired, the police noted that they are looking into the telephone records between the suspects. The SUV used in the shooting has been taken into the custody of Kataragama police. Police spokesperson SP Ruankuna Sekara noted that an internal investigation has been launched to ascertain why the security details of Venerable Thera did not open fire in order to apprehend the suspects as they fled the scene. The strike action launched by postal workers continued for a fifth consecutive day today. As a result of the strike action, thousands of letters are piling up at the Central Mail Exchange here in Colombo. Convener of the Joint Postal Trade Union Collective, Chintaka Bandar, noted that over 1.3 million letters and parcels remain at post offices around the country waiting to be distributed. He went on to note that all post offices around the country remained closed yesterday and today. According to Bandara, authorities had failed to grant them an opportunity to discuss their issues and as a result, they have been forced to continue their trade union action. Meanwhile, the postal strike has also impacted other facets of daily life. The police has informed that they have made arrangements for motorists to pay their traffic fines through divisional secretariat offices. In addition, the Department of Examinations also announced that steps have been taken to accept payments for examinations through divisional secretariat offices. Now there is a lot of speculation taking place with regard to the 2020 presidential election. The SLFP has hinted that uh, President Maitri Pala Sirisena would be running for re-election. The United National Party has hinted that uh, its leader, Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe, would run for the presidency. However, what will the opposition, the joint opposition, the SLPP do? Uh, the group of uh, President Mahindra Rajpaksa is yet to make a decision. Various names are being thrown around and so Journalists pose this question to former President Mahindra Rajpaksa. What candidate will they choose for the upcoming presidential election? We have not reached a decision yet. We need to make a decision as a party. We will reveal who it is when we make a decision. Even President Sirisena came out on the last day. They are speculating on various people and have begun to attack them. The government has selected its candidates, not us. Yes, there is something like that as well. That is why I said we can't say who it will be. And now this.
henchman of notorious criminal Velle Suda was arrested in the Piliandale area today along with a stock of heroin valued at around 25 million rupees. According to police media spokesperson S.P. Ruan Gunasekara, the suspect was arrested by the Police Narcotics Bureau. The suspect had been in possession of 2 kilograms and 120 grams of heroin. Police also took into custody a repeater firearm, 12 rounds of ammunition, a locally manufactured revolver, 3 rounds of 9mm ammunition and 3 gold jewels with over 20 gold sovereigns. The arrested suspect has been identified as Pradeep Nishanta Apuhami, a 35-year-old resident of Panadura. According to the police, the suspect had been living in a house in the Piliandale area. Police media spokesperson S.P. Gunasekhar noted that so far this year, the police have taken into custody over 33 kilograms of heroin. We now shift our attention to the United States where President Donald Trump is taking center stage for his recent summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. However, his uh, trade policies are also causing quite a stir among a number of countries. The International Monetary Fund or the IMF warned on Thursday that US President Donald Trump's new import tariffs threaten to undermine the global trading system, prompt retaliatory responses from other countries and damage the US economy. The IMF in a review of US economic policy also said that while the country's economic growth is expected to be strong this year and the next, recent tax and spending measures could cause greater risk from 2020 onwards. Recent actions by the US to impose tariffs on imports comes with further risks. Unilateral trade actions can be disruptive and may prove counterproductive to the functioning of the global economy and trading system. As I've said before, a so-called trade war, driven by reciprocal increases in import tariff, gives no winner. And we find generally losers on both sides. The negative impact on the global economy would be serious, not only if the United States takes action, but especially if other countries, as a result, were to retaliate, notably those that would be most affected, such as Canada, such as Germany, and other European countries. New York's Attorney General sued U.S. President Donald Trump, three of his children, and his namesake foundation on Thursday, alleging persistently illegal conduct at the non-profit, including support for Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. Barbara Underwood, the Attorney General, asked a New York state judge to dissolve the Donald J. Trump Foundation and impose bans on Trump, his sons Donald Jr. and Eric, and his daughter Ivanka from holding leadership roles in New York charities. Underwood said the 21-month-long investigation began under her predecessor Eric Schneiderman and uncovered extensive unlawful political coordination by the Foundation with Trump's campaign, as well as repeated and willful self-dealing to benefit Trump's personal businesses and political interests. Among the transactions the lawsuit cited as illegal was a $10,000 payment to the Unicorn Children's Foundation for a portrait of Trump purchased at a fundraising auction in 2014 and $100,000 paid to another charity to settle a legal claim in 2007. The lawsuit adds to legal problems affecting Trump, including a probe by special counsel Robert Mueller, into whether Trump's 2016 campaign colluded with Russia. Trump has denied there was any collusion and Russia has denied meddling with the election. The lawsuit filed in the state Supreme Court in Manhattan seeks $2.8 million US dollars of restitution plus penalties, a 10-year ban on Trump serving as director of a New York nonprofit, and a one-year ban for his children. And we will make America great again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Former tennis champion Boris Becker has claimed diplomatic immunity from bankruptcy proceedings against him, taking up a role with the Central African Republic as a sports envoy. Becker, 50 years old, was declared bankrupt by a British court in 2017. He was recently pursued for further assets according to a statement by his lawyers. The German wo former world number one lodged a claim at the High Court in London to halt the case because his appointment as an attaché to the European Union on Sporting, Cultural and Humanitarian Affairs entitled him to an immunity under the 1961 Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. Becker said the proceedings against him were unjust 
and unjustified. And that's a wrap of the brief at 7 for News First Digital. I'm Ramesh Irgal Bandara. And I'm Sarah Lafonseca. Just a reminder, you can always send in your comments through this Facebook Live. And for the next 15 minutes, we will be reacting to your comments in a bit of making this news bulletin more interactive. Good night.